unit and fifties. Um, you already have the essential question written down. So let's go ahead and move on to the nitty gritty and talk about our next left side questions. So our first left side question today is what happened immediately after? So let's talk about the DP. A demilitarized zone and that demilitarized zone separates North Korea from South Korea and it is four kilometers wide. So North Korea and nothing is allowed to be between the fences on either side of that demilitarized zone. So imagine that it's a border that's four kilometers thick. Uh, the Chinese who helps the North Koreans in the Korean War did maintain a military presence until 1958. And in 1958, the Chinese left. And at that point, North Korea basically truly became independent because up until then it was dependent upon the Chinese for defense. Um, the North dug many tunnels underneath the demilitarized zone, which could be considered an act of war. Um, those tunnels were meant to help its soldiers to avoid all of the mines um, that were along the border and as a quick way to invade the South should they choose to um, in the future. So uh, the South chose not to do anything about that, even though they knew those tunnels existed. Um, Kim Il-sung, who was the leader of North Korea, created the idea and philosophy of Juche, which is a Korean word meaning self-reliance. And the entire basis of North Korea's economy became relying on its own resources, not relying upon other countries, not relying upon any help from the outside. Uh, that sounded great, except for the fact that it wasn't actually true. Uh, Kim Il-sung was supported by the Soviet Union until it dissolved in 1991. And subsequent to that, the Chinese substantially helped the North Koreans as well. Uh, it also meant that the military always came first. If you live in North Korea, nothing is more important than the military, all the education, all the economic resources, pretty much all of the government's attention goes to the military because the military helps North Korea to continue to exist. If it were not for the North Korean military, North Korea would have ceased to exist a long time ago. Um, as in the entire time it's been in power, been paranoid about being taken out by the United States, by the South Koreans, by the Japanese, by the Chinese. Pretty much the only way they stay in power is through fear. Republic of Korea, South Korea, things were different. Um, the South did struggle for quite some time after the war. There was a time during which South Korea was actually in worse economic shape than North Korea because most of the war ravaged the South. The North was not nearly as damaged by the war. Uh, the land in the South and the economy of the South were devastated by the aftermath of the war. And so it took the South a long time to recover. Plus, the South had largely gotten taken over um, and they had to reestablish their government. Um, and Syngman Rhee, the president, um, was also about vengeance for those South Koreans who actually helped the North. Um, so... There were some internal struggles as well. The government became very repressive and not very democratic. So even though the war was fought to preserve democracy in South Korea, the truth of the matter is um, President Rhee was largely a dictator and it wasn't really a democracy that was responsible to the votes or the needs of its people. At that point in time, it has since become that. Uh, Park Chung-hee, who was a general, uh, actually took over the government from 1960 until 1979, so for a period of 19 years, uh, and ruled almost completely without limits. So even though South Korea had a constitution, even though South Korea had a uh, legislative branch, um, he pretty much 
worked outside of the Constitution and just maintained power and control. So South Korea was not exactly a bastion of democracy. Um, South Korea's economy did grow a great deal during this time, however, and it eventually surpassed the North. So the one thing that Park Chung-hee did was provided the stability in which the South Korean economy could grow, the people of South Korea could become richer, and it could surpass the North economically. That was a big deal. So when Park Chung-hee died, another person came to power, Chung Do wan who was another general. And so the military basically was ruling Korea for a substantial period of time. And so I will allow you to finish taking those notes and we will move on to the next slide. So there's a picture of Ch Park Chung-hee on the left, president of uh, the Republic of Korea from 1960 to 1979. And Chun Doo-hwan, the general who took over after him, ruled from 1979 to 1988. So that is a period of 28 years where South Korea was ruled by dictators from the military and not by democratically elected presidents. Um, that is a big deal. Moving on to the next slide. So let's talk about how North Korea evolved in the years after the Korean War. Um, go ahead and write that as a left side question, and we're going to talk about that. And there's quite a few pictures here, and I will talk to you about those pictures in just a moment. First thing you need to know that Kim Il-sung maintained an iron grip on North Korea until he died in 1994. Um, so pretty much from the Korean War to 1994, North Korea continued to be led by Kim Il-sung. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, it seriously damaged the North Korean economy because pretty much the North Korean economy survived because it was getting money from the Soviet Union. Once that money pot ran out, North Korea had to survive on its own and then it really had to practice juche and it didn't go very well. Kim Jong-il, who was the son of Kim Il-sung, became leader upon his father's death, and he started a nuclear weapons program. This is Kim Jong-il right here. This is Kim Jong-il quite a few years later uh, when he was older. And you are correct, looking at him, he did not have very good fashion taste. Uh, the Clinton administration, there's Bill Clinton, did negotiate a temporary end to the nuclear program while Kim Jong-il was in power. The North Koreans agreed to mothball their nuclear weapons program in exchange for food because when the Soviet support ran out, North Korea almost also experienced a famine, and it was during that famine that millions of people in North Korea ended up dying, and so they needed food. We gave them food. Um, they suspended their nuclear weapons program, and for a time, that worked out all right, but only for a time. When George W. Bush, that should be Bush, B-U-S-H, became president, uh, the nuclear program was started again. The North Koreans did not trust George W. Bush, and George W. Bush did not trust the North Koreans. So when George W. Bush took over for Bill Clinton, um, things changed. When Kim Jong-il himself died during the Obama administration, his son, Kim Jong-un, up here, right there, became the leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, otherwise known as North Korea. And Kim Jong-un was a lot more aggressive than his dad, Kim Jong-il. Kim is the family name. We call them the Kim family. So they, uh, the last name comes first. The family name comes first. And so after Kim Jong-un became the leader of North Korea, he accelerated North Korea's nuclear program, uh, did nuclear tests, and it is now believed that the North Koreans have many nuclear bombs, and they also have the missile systems to deliver them. So ladies and gentlemen, please have no doubt, North Korea is very dangerous, it has the ability to do a lot of damage, and it has that ability to deliver that damage here. That is concerning. With that, let's talk about the South. 
So how did South Korea evolve in the years after the Korean War? Totally different story. After the war, South Korea quickly surpassed the North economically. We talked about that when the generals were in charge. Uh, the South Koreans did quite well. Uh, the economy in South Korea has now become one of the strongest in Asia. The IA seems to be covered there by the former president of South Korea, who was impeached and removed from office. Uh, but uh, the economy of South Korea did become one of the strongest in Asia. South Korea was ruled by dictators until 1988 when they actually did start electing democratically elected presidents and when they did start becoming more responsive to their people. That was good. 1988 was also when they hosted the Summer Olympics. Um, it has many democratic elections since 1988, and presidents from both the right and the left has been elected. So, you know, South Korea has many political parties. Presidents of many different political parties have been elected. It hasn't just been one political party that has dominated politics in the South. South Korea still is defended to this day by 25,000 troops from the United States who helped to patrol the demilitarized zone. And they're also a tripwire. North Korea knows that if it attacks South Korea, it's also attacking the United States and that we serve as a backstop for the South Koreans, just like we did in the Korean War. We would do that again. And North Korea is fully aware that if they attack South Korea, they are attacking us. The United States will defend South Korea should war break out again. And so the tensions on the Korean Peninsula remained high. Kim Jong-un is very unstable. Uh, Donald Trump is a very different kind of president than we have had before. And so if either we miscalculate or the North Koreans miscalculate, the danger of a real nuclear war very much exists. And the president of South Korea, that's him right there, has actually started talking with Kim Jong-un and the North Koreans, and the Trump administration is not necessarily happy about that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is that magical time when I ask you to write a summary of how North and South Korea have changed and evolved since the Korean War, and how things have remained the same. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them down. Feel free to ask me. And uh, I, I get the sense this is one of the more popular lessons I've taught. So I hope you enjoyed it. But if you did, or if you didn't, this is still going to be when the rotating circle of death disappears, Mr. Blumendahl, once again, signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.